Tom Luongo is the publisher of the monthly newsletter Gold, Goats and Guns, which discusses geopolitics and markets. He is also the senior financial editor at Newsmax Media, editor of Stocks, Shocks and Rocks at Seeking Alpha, and has been an investor and market analyst for almost 20 years. Today we'll be talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Luongo. Thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, you've been writing prolifically on Bitcoin uh, and crypto for gold, mm -hmm. goats and guns. You've described recently in two of your articles, a future crypto version of Exer's pyramid, which places Bitcoin as the foundational monetary as asset or gold analog, followed by altcoins and utility coins such as Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple. It makes sense, which means that Bitcoin's value probably will go higher um, mm -hmm. and utility and altcoins will probably go higher too, but settle, I guess, on a more moderate price. The crypto market is segmenting and maturing, uh, as you write. Could you expound upon your vision of the future of cryptocurrency and the current market uh, actions? Sure. Uh, the first thing to remind people of is what Extra's Pyramid actually is. Uh, John Extra was a uh, an economist who uh, created a very handy visual tool for to look at the monetary, the global monetary system, uh, with uh, as an inverted pyramid, with a small amount of capital, um, physical capital being in gold, and then from there, every getting levered up through cash and stocks and bonds, real, real, uh, real assets like commodities, and then ultimately up in derivatives, and that that. And that the air, the ultimately the area of each of those, of those layers, gets bigger as we go along. And today's extra pyramid in the global monetary system, derivatives would dwarf almost the rest of it. it they wouldn't be equal layers. You know, it's, it's usually shown if you do a Google search on it, you'll see an image that's you know like equivalently thick layers, and that's not actually you know even close to being rational. But the the idea is that with less than two trillion dollars worth of gold uh, liquefies and supports a Hundred, you know, a quadrillion dollar level or or multi quadrillion dollar uh, global uh, derivative chain and everything else. Well, in the crypto world, we're going to need to have the same thing happen, and we need, I think, we need to have a uh, a foundational asset like Bitcoin that has a lot of the same properties as gold in today's marketplace um, to keep it from just becoming another medium of exchange. So, what I mean by that is that. You know, with the with the failure of SegWit 2x to kind of turn Bitcoin more into a medium of exchange, a good medium of exchange, it actually retains a lot of its qualities of gold. Gold is a terrible medium of exchange. Great store of wealth, brilliant unit of account. You can you know value anything in the world in grams of gold, but it's not a particularly good medium of exchange because you know how do you buy a loaf of bread with it? How do you buy a car with it? You know, all of those those basic problems of moving tons or grams or numbers of pounds of gold around. That's why we don't use it. That's why we don't use gold today as a medium of exchange. And Bitcoin in the crypto world that the rate that crypto transactions happen, which is much, much faster than uh, ultimately than that, than uh, than uh, the gold based monetary system can uh, for like moving property around and stuff makes sense that um, Bitcoin would retain those same problems that gold has. Those problems then go from being bugs to features as you know and that um uh slow transaction times high fees all of that retard its liquidity and retard its its money velocity but in but in doing so grounds the entire structure as a um as a uh, as a foundational asset that you can then value the rest of the crypto market versus the dollar market because that's really the issue at this point is to figure that out um but today's crypto market doesn't look like extra pyramid at all. As I pointed out in one of my articles, it actually looks like the inversion of extra pyramid, which is a big pyramid with Bitcoin at the bottom taking up most of the value and then and then very little value actually being driven up the value chain, uh, the segmented uh, segmenting of that market so into the altcoins, which I would consider all the fan, fast transaction coins like uh, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash and Monero and Zcash and all the privacy coins and all that. And then we move into the utility and platform tokens. And then the amount of real property and commodities that are crypto valued, that are valued in crypto. And there's very little of that. And then there's almost none in derivatives. Um, things like options and futures markets and things, things along those lines. So that's where we are. And, we're, and then where we have to get to is the complete inversion of that. And at the same time, 
the whole value of the crypto market, which currently stands at about $244 billion, is probably going to go up by an order of magnitude or two. And so Bitcoin's growth path in terms of price might actually start to retard relative to the rest of those other markets because those mar other markets, other segments of the crypto markets, of the crypto monetary system are, are fundamentally undervalued because there's nothing there yet. There's no there there, right? And the, to, to quote uh, Gertrude Stein. So that's where we are. And I just see that we're at this like kind of infancy stage of people actually beginning to think about this in these terms and think about the crypto market in these terms. So that's where I think we are. All right. And I wanted to talk about one of the other um, utility uh, coins like Ripple. I kind of like Ripple. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I've been reading that American Express just joined RippleNet. And I believe 11 top banks have also joined the Ripple system. And on top of that, it was recently reported that a private summit of central bank officials uh, took place to discuss Ripple. If Ripple will become a bona fide part of the global monetary exchange and financial system, what do you think are its prospects? Where do, where, where, where do you see Ripple going? I, at being as a being a hardcore kind of radical libertarian Bitcoin guy from the beginning, I fundamentally distrust Ripple because it was created by the it was created by the very people who corrupted the monetary system and created the necessity for Bitcoin in the first place. Okay, Bitcoin is a catastrophic mutation of money uh, in response to a completely and utterly corrupt monetary system that has um, just driven extreme levels of wealth inequality and all of the things that the political left complain about, right and rightly so. Um, that now at the at the same time, so Ripple fundamentally, I, I am um, I am distrustful of because it's controlled by those pe same people, uh, in the same way that I'm distrustful of the CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, wanting to do cash settled Bitcoin futures. I'm incredibly um, suspect of their intentions, right? Because I've seen what they've done in the gold and silver markets. I've seen what they've even done in the oil markets, and I don't like any of that. So, um, but. As a, but Ripple does that, that all that being said, Ripple does, um, fulfill an incredibly important layer in the crypto market that we do need a, an easy medium of exchange between all of these different, you know, Forex pairs and uh, that are running around. And now that we have hundreds more, right. You know, a couple of years ago, we had a couple hundred, you know, a couple hundred. Now we have a thousand, right. And, um, and that's only going to proliferate. Uh, more so as the crypto market uh, stratifies, right? So I don't know. I'm you know things like American Express getting on board is good I, from a, for for Ripple. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if that's where the crypto market need, wants or needs to go. There are other uh, players in that same space. Um, platforms like Waves and a few others are are attempting to do the same thing and creating fiat gateways uh, with easy inter, uh, interchangeability. Uh, distributed exchanges and, and the like in order to uh, get that stuff done in, in order to perform a lot of those same uh, market functions. So we'll see who wins. Uh, but I think that that's an, uh, a, a criminally underserved portion of the crypto market. And therefore, they're all going to win from this point forward. They're all going to win. The question is, who's going to win the most? Right. And what about uh, Ethereum? You've been recommending it as a unique investment uh, opportunity. I kind of like Ethereum as well. Um, what your thoughts there? I I like Ethereum. I like all. I like many of the platform coins. When I call the platform tokens, um, EOS, Neo, um, Ethereum, Ethereum like Bitcoin has mind share. It has developer uh, first mover advantage, right? Uh, it may wind up like Bitcoin may wind up in the end not to be the thing that everybody. You know, it may be the, the, the thing that starts the, the, the revolution, right? But not the one that ends it, the ones of, you know, with every, you know, with the, the market share. I'm not sure I agree with that statement. I'm just saying that that's, it's very possible. And at this point in time, Ethereum is for retail level investors. And that's really what Gold Guns and Guns is about. I'm not looking to go too far off the, the beaten path here. It is really a newsletter for retail level investors who need, you know, someone to hold their hand through what are tremendously tumultuous times. And I used to do this when I, it was this very similar uh, strategy that I ran when I, when I had a, an investment newsletter over at Newsmax, the Resolute Wealth Letter. Um, it's really kind of a refinement of that strategy, which is, you know, it, it is still a retail level investment. So I don't want to go too far off the beaten path. You know, Ethereum has mind share and that makes it pow uh, powerful and a powerful investment 
opportunity, even though there may be better ones out there, even though there may be ones out there with tremendously higher, um, you know, theoretical upsides, but you know, are you going to complain if someone recommended to you that you got a, an investment tip that made you 10 extra, 20 extra money with almost, with very little risk as opposed to, you know, a risky coin that, you know, gave you a hundred X risk, a uh, hundred X return. You know, it's, 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 you're playing those games, you know, you're trying to play those games, um, when you're adv advising people and giving them stock recommendations. And so I take all that very, very, very seriously to try and balance the, the, the risk versus reward and the, uh, and how to segment your um, your position. I think actually that Ethereum in some ways is a good hedge against the dollar uh, because I just think that, you know, that mind share along with Bitcoin, uh, that those the, the mind share that those two have at this point is enough to, uh, to continue to press them forward uh, as we move into what I see as a, a financial crisis of brewing in the euro and then eventually in the dollar over the course of the next five years or so. And you, you mentioned the re revolution. I, maybe we can talk about this for a second, you know, whether you, sure. whether you like uh, Bitcoin or crypto or, or not. I, I think this is, it's, it's true what analysts have been saying, that they've been comparing the Bitcoin crypto revolution to the internet revolution. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at the turn of the century, giants of the internet revolution, Netscape at the time, pets.com, Google, eBay, Amazon, you know, they exploded in price, they collapsed. A lot of them were wiped out but the point was right. that the technology of the internet was um, invaluable it's here to say the, the weak players were, were shaken out and it seems like the same thing now is happening with the crypto revolution the same principle um you know i think you you wrote that we're not in a bubble i mean perhaps we can just use that term <laughs> we're in a bubble uh, you know probably go down a lot will get shaken out and then we'll have, like you were just talking about, Ethereum might might be here, might not. What are your thoughts about this revolution? Um, I don't think we're in a bubble as, a, as, as far as crypto is concerned. I think that there's going to be times when the market's going to get ahead of itself and everybody will continue to call it a bubble because they want to call it a bubble because they need to in order to make themselves feel good about the fact that they missed out on 10,000% returns. Okay. And, you know, and for a while i understand that i was you know there at the beginning when bitcoin first went live and i was part of the i, I you know very early before the mount Gox explosion implosion i got uh i got hacked and i lost my initial coins i had like a couple hundred of them um and you know and for that and then i didn't and i kept watching the market going i don't see this space really growing up you know this is 2012 2013 i didn't really see it growing up uh it's only now with you know and i missed the the i missed the evolution of Ethereum, where Ethereum, you know, added smart contracts, and that's, and when I finally understood that that's what that's where there where this market could, was going to go, uh, it, it became very clear to me very quickly that we were now moving into different territory, and that that what which happened, you know, that which was what I was looking for in the in the blockchain environment, um, was was becoming reality, uh, and then that's when I so I've only really basically you know, very recently in the last you know a year or so gotten back on the the, the crypto bandwagon where having just, you know, left it behind for years. I'm not bitter about, you know, having lost, you know, potentially millions of dollars. It is what it is. It's, you know, it's a, um, it, it, it's happened. So I don't think we're in a bubble. I, we've seen 90% corrections in Bitcoin. Um, and we've seen multiple 90% corrections and we'll see more of them. We'll, you know, and if you want to call that a bubble and then, you know, bubble and correction, you can, but the truth is, is that, this is incredibly volatile market and very volatile markets happen because the amount of capital that's flowing in and the hot money flows that are flowing in and flowing out are, there's no, there are no circuit breakers on this. You know, there's no circuit breakers in hit BTC. There's no circuit breakers in Bitfinex, right? Not like there are in the Chicago mercantile exchange, not like there are in the Dow or the DAX or the Tokyo exchange, the Topex or whatever. It doesn't matter. Though they all have circuit breakers in place. They all have central banks to back everything up in order to try and keep panic to a minimum. And, you know, we're not going to have that. And, you know, we are flying without a net. And so it's going to look a lot more, the volatility is going to be uh, heart stopping. We held, there was a heart, there was a heart stopping move in Bitcoin gold the other day. And I don't know if you watched it or not, but over the course of 12 hours, we went from 120 down to 60 up to 250 as the, as the, as the, the people who got their initial coins sold out, they got, they, and we, we marked the bottom and now we're and moving forward. I just, I, I'm uncomfortable with the idea that Bitcoin is in a bubble because the truth is, is that we're going to see at least a 10 X, you know, at least an order of magnitude, more capital flow into that market before we even decide whether or not this is the way we want to go for the future or not. 
I think that there's at least another $2 trillion that are going to move into the big, uh, the crypto markets uh, to run this experiment. Even if it is a bubble, even if it is an experiment that ultimately fails, I think there's still at least a 10x upside on here. And, and then we'll figure it. And if that over the course of the, say, what, two, maybe three, four years, I'm, I'm being conservative here. It could be 18 months. It could be six months. Um, if, uh, if Europe, if, if what I see coming for the European Union starts to come to pass, I think we can get to a $2 trillion valuation in the cryptos before the end of 2018. And do, then what? do you think some of the lesser known cryptocurrencies would eventually d disappear and, and you'd have oh yeah, yeah. yeah. there's going to be um, I, i'm sorry i didn't yeah. if i uh, with all of that rambling mm -hmm. i didn't get to the, the 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 main most of these coins are junk most of these tokens are junk they don't have business models they have white papers it's very it's a very dangerous place to 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 invest i, I i've been uh i've advised people and have worked in the penny stock area in gold and resource mining for a long time. And previously that's where, you know, previous to cryptos, um, you know, I've advised people on, you know, whether or not this particular gold mining stock is going to be going to go anywhere. And there's specific strategies that you employ to, uh, invest in those markets. And, um, and you be very careful because you understand that you are literally betting and you might as well just, you know, throw your money on a roulette table. And, uh, that somehow in, in, in many respects, roulette's got better odds, right? Um, but you know, in other respects, if you do your due diligence and you know, the people in the industry and, the, and you do all that, that hard work to suss out which one, which ones do the suss out, you know, what's the wheat and what's the chaff, you can have a better win percentage. And then ultimately, you know, you're still going to miss three or four, 30 or 40% of the time. But if you hit 60% of the time in the resource markets, you're going to be a millionaire. And, um, cause you only really need a 10 or 20% hit rate to turn a profit. Um, cause you know, and it's the same thing that's going to happen in the cryptos. You can take equal tranches in 20 different coins. And if four of them go, you know, great guns and the other 16 go to zero, you're still up money. You know, you're still up. And, uh, and that's the, that's the, that is in, in effect the, the strategy that you should be taking. And it should be the, the mindset that you should be, uh, entering this market with, uh, you know, extreme levels of both fear and greed, right? Risk and reward. So uh, let's talk about governments going crypto. You've been writing about why Russia needs crypto. I'm living in mm -hmm. Kazakhstan currently, which w yep. was part of the former Soviet Union. And the Kazakh president is promoting uh, crypto. He wants um, the national currency to get into that. This crypto mm -hmm. fervor also seems complementary on the part of both countries as they are members of the Eurasian Economic Union. I assume yes. it has to do with greater domestic monetary control, which you indeed pointed out stating that Russia's mm -hmm. financial system is its fundamental weakness. Why this rush to crypto and digital currency among some of these governments? That's a great question. And it's, it, it's I understand that I'm a, I'm a very strong bull on Russia, both, be, uh, both economically and politically. And on the Eurasian Economic Union, I write for Russia Insider on three, three to four times a week, actually, uh, or at least a lot of my stuff gets cross-posted over there. Um, and uh, so... Understand that, you know, and actually, to be honest with you, I've, I've said for a long time that if there was an easy way for I could get retail investors to invest in Kazakhstan, I would put them in it. I can't, I just can't. There's no listed stocks. There's no, you know, there's, it's, it's a, it's, and I, I spoke with Jim Rogers about this at an investor conference, uh, last two years ago, actually, that was put on by Newsmax. I met Jim Rogers and he had just gotten back from Kazakhstan, as a matter of fact. And he said it's one of the, one of the, you know, areas of the world that he's putting significant amount of money in. He's, he's great growth for your country. Um, and to me, I think it's a, it's a very pivotal country geopolitically. So it's very important that they have a monetary system, uh, and a means by which to all attract investor capital that cannot be attacked by the George Soros of the world and by the federal reserves of the world. It's incredibly important. And I, you know, I may have over, I, I probably overstated Russia's I, the, the case for this in terms of what, what Russia is doing, because I, you know, I, I see these things and then immediately say, OK, I know what that's going to mean. And you can see three, four years into the future on this. Um, and we're we're at the infancy of what they're uh, of what's going to be pulled off here. But it's very obvious that I think Vladimir Putin sees this for what it is. I think his talk with uh, Vitalik Buterin back in uh, St. Petersburg in March was eye-opening for him as a means by which to protect the Russian 
uh, financial system from external attack, having just gone through a massive coordinated attack in 2014, 2015 on the ruble and on oil prices, which I, I fundamentally believe was, was geopolitically motivated. Um, and so, and it's important for the growth of the Eurasian Economic Union, especially uh, within the context of China's Belt and Road Initiative and what's going to have to eventually come of the European Union as they divorce themselves in the United States and the, and, and the UK. Uh, Germany is the pivotal uh, player in this. But I think for all of you, you the, the ability to move capital across borders without constraints and to legalize, to create a legal framework to be able to take cryptos and turn them back into rubles or tens or whatever we need them to, to move back into in order to pay bills and pay taxes and all that stuff. Once that framework is established, it will allow for cross-border capital movements for the supply chain, for just basic everyday transactions that need to be done. I think I put the, uh, uh, the example in the article that if, you, I, if I'm in Moscow running a business and I've got a supplier in Astana and uh, a client in Belarus and I'm in the middle of a supply chain, I can use Bitcoin to move all this stuff across the borders and never have to worry about hitting the central banks. And so the central banks don't have to manage the dollar reserves and their and their ruble reserves. They don't have to worry about that stuff. All they have to worry about is making sure that their local markets are liquid, have the ample amount of liquidity to deal with local trade. And that frees them up from a massive bout of risk and makes it a lot easier for them to conduct monetary policy uh, and, and, and conduct monetary policy in such a way that it's actually reflective of the risk of doing business in each of these countries, which is what interest rates are supposed to do. Remember, I'm an Austrian economist. Interest rates are a measure of risk and uh, the cost of money is very important. And, it, and, and when you, when you muck with that, you muck with the, the structure of production and you exacerbate the natural ebbs and flows of the business cycle. And I think that um, this is very forward thinking on the part of the Russians and, uh, and, uh, and the leadership in Kazakhstan to begin the process of embracing this. Estonia is already proving to everybody that this is possible with their land registry being now on the, the blockchain and other things along those lines. I think that's all coming. And I think it's very important. So I guess good that I'm wearing my Austrian econ uh, economics tie. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Ooh, yay! <laughs> Big thumbs up. Big thumbs up. But it's it's interesting you mention um, the stock exchange. Um, they are opening one up in Kazakhstan, oh. and in fact, next week I'm meeting uh, and will interview the managing director of the Astana Financial Center, where, where we'll be talking geopolitics of Kazakhstan as well as the economics. So people can uh, oh, stay tuned. Fantastic. Listen to that. Excellent. Make sure that you send me the link to, if, when you when you do the podcast on that. I really would like to, that. That to me is like that's gold to me. That's 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 gold level research right there. So crypto gold. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Well, and in this case, yeah. in this case, all gold, <laughs> geopolitical gold, crypto gold, real gold, yada yada yada. And what about crypto uh, skeptics? You know, I, I think Bitcoin, the technology is is neutral and it can be used mm -hmm. used for good or bad. But what about a w worst case scenario? Could Bitcoin be a sort of a Pandora box where that converts us into a cashless digital currency society, which would give governments, bad governments, total control over the economy and its citizens? Have you ever run that thought experiment? I have. And I think public, I, I think that the privacy coins are the check on that. I think the privacy coins like Dash and Zcash and Monero and others, and uh, you know even Steam has the ability to put um, ring sig uh, ring signatures into uh, their uh, into that blockchain as well, uh, ring signature uh, um, uh, transaction signing, in order to uh, create anonymity. I think that ultimately, at the end of the day, that there's the the crypto market because the technology is neutral and because humans are in uh insanely inventive and i believe uh fundamentally as an austrian and as a libertarian uh i fundamentally believe in the ability of human beings to be one step ahead of the hatchet man that the governments are always fighting the last war central banks are always fighting the last war and so are generals um they can't help but because that's just the the state the the pace at which they move um i don't fear a cashless society Right. I, I don't fear that at all. Uh, you know, we could get to a point where if we really needed to, you know, we could start printing 
you know, one tenth, one 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 hundredth Bitcoin physical tokens that people move around with the you know with the private keys imprinted on the back and all that stuff. You could get back to that if you really needed to move cash and needed to move stuff an, uh, anonymously around the world, um, just the same way that we move um, gold coins, right? But the problem, but the best, but the better part of Bitcoin is that it's infinitely fungible. And so now the problem of, you know, shaving a, a gram of gold off of, you know, to pay for your, 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 uh, to pay for Coke is just not possible. I, I don't, I, but again, this is all like, you know, crazy, silly stuff. It's never going to look like that. And what will happen is, um, the more the governments attempt to rein it all in, the more we will find workarounds that they will not be able to deal with. And, uh, and they, and, and they'll constantly be playing catch up, uh, because they just don't move nearly as quickly as human innovation does. And, uh, you know, we'll be well onto our way to internet 4.0 before they even realize how to deal with internet 3.0. And that's just, it's been the history. It's always been the history of it. Um, and they, and this, they were, they thought they had it licked in this last round with, um, the transnational uh, um, treaty, uh, economic treaties like the TPP and the TTIP and, uh, the European union and all of this stuff in order to create this kind of corporate global, you know, superstructure over sovereign, over sovereignty that failed. The people just said no and multiple, and we've had now multiple election cycles across the, uh, across the planet, um, across the first world that has, uh, rejected that Brexit, Donald Trump, now Angela Merkel losing her position in Germany, Catalonia getting tired of it. Italy's going to break away from the EU. And this is all, these are all expressions of no, this is all expressions of people saying no to this kind of, you know, Orwellian control that they've been quietly, you know, trying to write into the, and make legal in the kind of Emperor Palpatine sense. And it's, it's not working and it's all going to fail. And it's, and it's about the internal contradictions of, of central planning and socialism and all of that, that eventually, you know, lead to this kind of effectively we're into the crack up boom now. And that's the other reason why I think that um, we're going to see a tremendous uh, upswing in the value of the crypto markets, regardless of whether or not it's the technology we need to, um, to you know, kind of protect ourselves from, you know, this kind of level of control reasserting itself, this kind of, you know, dystopian corporatist nightmare reasserting itself. I just don't think it's going to happen, but we'll see, you know. And, and I guess, as you say, we... We can go back to gold, goats, and guns if, if mm. that happens. Um, sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, those three things, and that, I, you know, it's not a, it, it's not a, um, it's not a frivolous name, right? Gold, goats, and guns mean something. Um, gold is a found, is a foundational asset. It's a, it's your savings. Goats are your industry. They are a representative of your time and your the work you put in to mix your labor with the land in order to create capital in order to save some and consume and, and defer consumption. And then there's guns in which is what you use metaphorically to protect it all. And, um, Bitcoin and the crypto markets have all the aspects of gold, goats and guns. So, and time for a silly question. Will, sure. will John McAfee's prediction of 500,000 Bitcoin come true? And if not, do you think he will, uh, follow through on his best? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can see 500 grand in Bitcoin. I don't know when, and I, and I certainly don't know how in, I mean, I, I can see a path to it. I'm not going to argue that it's likely. I think McAfee may be a little ahead of himself, but you know, he's a, you know, he's, he's a very interesting guy. Um, I'm, you know, I'd like for him to be right. Cause you know, it'll make, you know, everybody who got it, who feel like they got in too late now will be like, Oh my God, now what do I do with all this money? And, uh, or that the dollar will become worthless. But I, I don't see that happening. Um, I, I, what I see is first a dollar super cycle with the European Union needs to implode because it's the politically the one that's under the most divisional stress at this point. Donald Trump is actually getting control of the United States government. He's going to tame the deep state. I really do feel that he's on the verge of doing, of beginning, of truly turning the corner and beginning that process. Um, reading the tea leaves on that as well. And that Vladimir Putin has a, has a good handle on geopolitics and, uh, and the two of them together kind of independently are taming the you know, United States neoconservative deep state. Um, and I think they're, they're doing a fine job of it and we can look to what's happening in Syria as that, but all of that would be a precursor to, um, uh, all of that would have to, it have to fail 
and we'd have to have a, a monetary crisis of the you know that that dwarfs 2008 by a couple of orders of magnitude for McAfee to be right about that. I don't know that we're going to get that, but we're going to get something really really bad. We're going to get something that's worse than 2008. I don't know if it's going to be orders of magnitude worse than 2008. Um, we'll see. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I just odds are I, I can you know, I can't put probabilities on it, but say that you know maybe there's a 25 or 30 percent chance of that happening, and if so, then McAfee will be right. Will he pay at that point? Well, he won't care. Yeah, I'll pay. <laughs> so, and is there anything else uh, I may have left out, or you just want to mention about cryptocurrencies or, or Bitcoin? No, I think I've covered most of what I really, you know, I, 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 that I understand. I mean, I'm not a full blown expert on the market at this point. I learn about new coins every day that are happening that, uh, I, I found a, a couple of them yesterday that I found really now very interesting. And I, you know, it's like everything else. I'm only one guy and I can't do, you know, infinite research, uh, while still trying to, you know, keep, a, an, uh, an output level that is, you know, sensible. Um, I think that these big themes within crypto are the important ones. And if you, you know, if you get the big, it's like the important part for people to understand the, the big takeaway is if you get the big things right, if you get the big trends right, then it doesn't matter particularly whether you caught a bottom or caught a top or th- it doesn't matter because you're going to make money anyway. We don't have to catch the bottom exact, exact uh, bottom in gold, for example, like which we haven't seen yet. I don't think, um, you know, if you're, if you're fully invested, you have your full position in gold at this point, you're fine. You may be six months or eight months early, but so what? When gold is seven thousand dollars an ounce, you're not going to care whether you paid twelve hundred dollars for it or thirteen hundred dollars for it or eleven hundred for it. It's not going to matter. You know, when when you're looking at five hundred or a thousand percent returns, nine ninety versus ten ten doesn't matter, right? What matters is you know that you got that you caught the big part of the move. And what the the big takeaway for the crypto enthusiasts at this point, uh, or even skeptics at this point, is understand that we're still in like the first or second inning of what's happening here. And even if it's still just, as I said earlier, even if it's still just an experiment, I don't think it's an experiment. I think it's where we're going. I think it's where we're headed. Um, at least in this next phase of the monet, this next 85 year monetary cycle, I think this is what we're going to have is as our basis of, of the next, you know, uh, let's put it this way. Um, the great story of the 20th century was the removal of gold from the, from the everyday monetary system. Okay, it was the it was the systematic removal of gold from the monetary system as we moved to a global monetary system. Gold needed to go away. That was the great story of the 20th century. Well, now we need to do away with debt being the store of value, right? Or the the, the asset that we the debt with the basically the labor, the human capital that undergirds the debt that undergirds the currency is, is has been converted to debt. Debt based monetary the this debt based monetary system is an aberration. And that, and, and it's led to the development of crypto and it's led to the development of trust that we need trust back in our money. And this is the end of that cycle. And I think the next 85, 80, you know, 90, you're thinking in Martin Armstrong, 85 year cycle terms or chondri- chondriti of winter, uh, chondriti of, uh, 85 year cycles that I think the next one is, is based on crypto. And I think we're in the first inning of this, of the transition. So that's where I think we are. You answered my question on gold and it's a good place to to end the interview, I think. Uh, your website is tomluongo.me, M-E. Or, gold, uh, or goldgoatsandguns.com. Or goatsandguns.com. People can support you on Patreon on, and they can subscribe mm-hmm. to your uh, monthly newsletter for $12. Uh, could you tell us more about uh, your, sure. your work? Sure. The Patreon service has three levels. One is a, a dollar a month for a tip jar. You know, do you like my public work? You know, drop uh, drop a dollar in a month. That would be great. Uh, I also do a private blog where I give about trading tips and uh, the specific things for headlines, whatnot that I think are you know worth holding behind the paywall for my subscribers. Um, and then at twelve dollars a month is the the full package, which is the Gold Goats and Guns monthly newsletter, uh, where we have uh, uh, specific. Uh, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Unique and uh, exclusive articles on uh, editorials on where I think we're going uh, culturally, economically, uh, geopolitically. And then, of course, there's a model portfolio with stock investment picks and, and, the, and, and the whole nine yards, along with a full portfolio strategy on how to build a portfolio. Even if you don't like the picks themselves, you're more than welcome to use the portfolio strategy as a means by which to uh, structure your own, uh, your own investments. And also... People don't forget to support 
the Geopolitics and Empire podcast on Patreon. To every, Absolutely. To everyone out there, invest in crypto wisely. And thank you, Tom, for the interview. And best of luck on your new fascinating newsletter.